Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video, and this is Creality CR10 Max, the latest and the biggest 3D printer from Creality. In this video, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts and experience with this machine, and if you're looking for a large-scale 3D printer, stay tuned. CR10 Max is a massive 3D printer, and for sure it's lived up to his name. Build volume of this 3D printer is 450 by 450 by 470 millimeters. That's around 95 liters of volume or 25 gallons, which is the biggest build volume of any other desktop 3D printer that I ever test on this channel. Of course, not everybody needs 3D printer this large and for sure it's not the most practical one, but there are many people out there who likes and need to print huge objects and those guys will be happy about the size of the CR10 Max. Speaking of size, this machine is 650mm wide, 785mm long and 735mm tall, which is already huge. But when you load the filament, place that long flat cable on the side and when this massive heated bed start to move back and forward, the total external size of this machine increase even more and the total space that you need for this printer when it's printing is around 750mm by 1 meter by 970 millimeters, which is a norm size for a desktop 3D printer. Thanks to position of these rubber legs, I was able to place it on my 65 centimeter desk, but I needed to use the clamps to make sure it stays in a place during printing, as only half of the rubber legs was on a table surface, and I didn't want to take any risk leaving 20 kg 3D printer printing overnight by standing only on a half leg surface. When I got the printer, it was very well packed inside of this huge shipping box, and nothing was damaged. My first impression when I opened the package was, wow, this thing is huge. Look at the size of this heated bed. Then, when I leave the bottom frame, I saw that heated bed cable is quite short and it's connected to the control box. I start to think how I'm gonna take it out from the box. Eventually, I cut the box and I slide the printer out. Also, one warning. Be careful about the screws on the control box, as someone on assembly line slightly stripped the head of these screws and they are very sharp. You can easily scratch yourself or your table if you're not careful, so place some cloth on the table or take the small fill and fill them down a bit. In the package there was also one small box in which you will get all kinds of things like manual, USB cable, tools, 0.2mm filler gauge, spare nozzle, 0.4 and 0.8mm, cleaning clog needle, micro SD card with a reader, cutters, 250 gram of filament, frame pieces, screws, spatula, spare Capricorn tube, zip ties, AC power cord, and finally a filament holder. CR10 Max assembling is a quite easy process and even beginners can assemble this printer without a problem. Instructions that came with the printer are simple and easy to follow and on the micro SD card there is a nice step-by-step -step video of the whole assembling process. You need around 30 minutes to assemble this printer if you use the supply tools. I'm using my cordless screwdriver to speed the things up. There is only four main components that we need to put together. Upper frame, bottom frame, control box and the frame support bars. First, I place the control box underneath the bottom frame. There are two screws on the front that we need to screw down and these two on the back. Then, I put the upper frame in a place, nice and slow. Next, I carefully lift one side of the frame and I install the long frame screws. Then, I install the frame side bracket and I repeat the same process on other side. Next, I place the printer down on the table and I install the metal brackets for the support bars on the top of the frame. Next up are the support bars. On each bar there is a thread in the center on which you will screw down the small threader rod first and then you will screw down the other piece of the bar. Basically just twist the bar in opposite direction until they become one solid piece. Next I screw down the nuts on each eye bolt and then I screw them on the each of the bar end. Next I attach the support bar with the side screws on the top of the frame first. Make sure that you left a bit of the space for the nut. Next I screw down this eye bolt until I got perfect match with the frame and then I screw it down. Then I took the wrench number 10 and I screw down the secure nut which will make sure that the bars stay locked in this position. 
Then I install the filament spool holder. And the next stop is the wiring. First I plug in the BL touch and the main flat cable. I plug in the both Z stepper motors. I plug in the power cord. I turn on the printer and assembling was finished. CR10 Max is ready and now let's do the overview. External look and frame design of CR10 Max are kind of mixed hybrid of all CR10S4 and CR10S Pro. For example, CR10 Max has the same type of the robust frame made of aluminum extrusions just like the CR10S4, but the upper frame with all components on the CR10 Max are the same as on the CR10S Pro, except the new BL touch. On other hand, entire bottom frame on CR10S Pro is basically the whole control box, while on CR10S Max the control box is much smaller and it's located underneath the heated bed and extend forward beyond the frame. Out from the box CR10 Max come with these two metal rods, which attach to the upper frame with a metal brackets, this forms triangle and reinforce the upper frame, and the z-axis is much more stable and the whole frame are more stiff, which makes sense for the printer of this size. I also noticed that the y-axis stepping motor is upgraded to much larger one, and now it has dual axle with the two separate belts and pulleys which moves this massive heated bed. The new stepping motor has a lot of torque, and when I tried to hold the heated bed when it was moving, the whole printer moves entire desk without the skipping, so you need to be very careful and not to place your fingers underneath the heated bed when the printer is working, as it can be dangerous, and that's why there is this safety warning label here on the control box. Speaking of control box, let's have a look on internal components. The CR10 Max has the same motherboard with the silent stepper drivers like the CR10S Pro and the same LCD screen. But instead of one power supply that is on CR10S Pro, CR10 Max now comes with a dual Minwell power supplies. There is one big 750 watt power supply which runs that giant heated bed and there is one smaller 75 watt power supply for stepper drivers, hot end and all other electronic components. There is also heat bed MOSFET, cooling fan, speaker and the whole setup works on 24 volt. It's good to mention that all the cables are nicely organized, isolated and grounded, which is very nice. On the main power socket there is a safety fuse and on the front side there is the touch LCD screen, which is bright and sharp just like on the cr Pro. On the right there is on-off switch, on the top left there is a place for microSD card and mini USB plug type A. Just like the cr Pro, cr Max also comes with a filament runout switch, the genuine Bontech dual gears on the Bowden extruder, which works great, there is also genuine Capricorn Bowden tube, which can withstand much higher temperature than the generic PTF tubes. You can print all kinds of the filament, including the flexible one, without a problem with this setup. X carriage are the same as on the cr Pro, on the right side there is the same filament cooling fan, 40 by 20 mm size, which is very powerful. Only minor complaint is that this air duct nozzle is not made from injected ABS plastic. Instead, it's 3D printed in PLA, which can deform and fall out if you print a lot of ABS. That actually happened on my cr Pro long ago. To fix this issue, you can print one of those air duct nozzles from Thingiverse, which attach on both fan on the screws, which is nice, but there is a problem. This new air duct nozzle is designed in a such a way that inner diameter of the exhaust hole is a much smaller comparing to the stock part, and in practice this actually blocks and restricts a lot of airflow and put more stress on the cooling fan if you set fan speed to 100%. I found that only around 65% of the fan speed you can use with this air duct nozzle. So unfortunately I cannot recommend this part until somebody remakes it and make this exhaust hole bigger and better shape. What I can recommend is to print the stock air duct nozzle in PTG and slightly move the X carriage cover down away from the heat block. I did that long ago on my cr Pro and I did not have any issue since. In terms of software interface, it's pretty much the same like on the cr Pro. This printer also used the two separate firmware, one runs the LCD software interface and the Marlin firmware runs on the motherboard. Touchscreen are nice and responsive and interface are simply and easy to use, just like on the cr Pro. 
But unlike CR 10s Pro, which on the launch it had some issues with leveling, the firmware had some bugs and capacitive outer level sensor was inaccurate. The new CR 10s Max now comes with a BL Touch and improved 1.70 firmware with a thermal protection enable. So if any thermistor or heater on the hot end or heated bed fail for some reason, the printer will stop and shut down all heating and the error message will pop up on the screen. In terms of auto leveling on CR10 Max, it works great out from the box. Once that I screw down these adjusting wheels on the heated bed to approximately the same level, I click on the leveling icon and then on the measurements. The printer will then start leveling sequence and take measurements with a BL touch on the 16 places on the heated bed. And then I set my Z offset. Then I start my first test print and fine tune my Z offset to around minus 3 mm. And that's it. I did not touch it no more and my first layer on the CR10 Max was perfect every time. One tip, when the printer is finished printing and you want to remove the finished print with a spatula, don't slam the spatula hard while the print are still on the heated bed. Heat bed on the CR10 Max and the CR10 S Pro are made of two separate aluminum sheets and the top one is removable. So open these clamps and take off the upper sheet with a finished print, place it on a flat and clean surface and then use the spatula to remove the print or hammer if you want, it doesn't matter. By doing so, you will not mess up the heat bed level ever again. Also, it is a good to mention that before each print, when the heat bed and hot end reach the printing temperature, the printer will automatically trigger the auto bed leveling sequence and the printer will take the new measurement with a BL touch, which is a good idea actually, since the different type of filaments require different heat bed temperature as well. And this massive heat bed can have a different offset between the pro points when it's hot. In fact, keeping the aluminum heated bed this size perfectly straight is a very hard and that's why the Creality has installed this aluminum extrusion support underneath the heated bed, which indeed reinforce the heated bed and keep it nice and straight. But in the same time, these aluminum extrusions behaves like a heat sinks and that's a problem. When the heated bed is warming up, these aluminum extrusions actually take away a lot of heat from the heated bed, which makes temperature on the heat bed surface very uneven and inaccurate. This will eventually affect negatively on the printing and your prints can warp, especially the big ones. That's why the Creality installed this heat insulation in the center of the heated bed, but it's not good enough. During my heat bed testing, I monitored the heated bed with my thermal camera and infrared temperature meter. What I found is that the temperature differences over heat bed surface was over 12 degrees lower in the center of the heated bed where aluminum extrusions was installed, compared to the surface around it. Even after 20 minutes of waiting, temperature of the heated bed surface was not getting equal and I could not reach more than 82 degrees on the heated bed. And the temperature on the screen was showing 110 degrees, which is completely inaccurate. After some thinking, I came up with a solution and here's what I did to fix this issue. First, I take off the aluminum sheet with a build tech. Then, I unscrew the old screws, which holds the aluminum extrusions underneath. Then, take off the aluminum extrusions. Then, I take one insulation cotton sheet and I cut match pieces with a razor blade. Then, I took the double side tape. and attach this insulation on the aluminum extrusions like this. And then I repeat the same process on all four pieces. And this is how they look now. And then I put everything back in a place. The idea was that this insulation will block and minimize heat transfer from the heated bed to these aluminum extrusions while still keep the heated bed nice and straight. Of course, there will be some heat loss because of the metal screws, but not near as bad as before. When I repeat my heat bed warming up test after this fix, the heat bed reached 100 degrees this time, and the temperature difference of the heated bed was very nice and equal as it should be. And I'm sure that this heated bed can reach 110 degrees easy only if the thermistor was better calibrated in a firmware. So I might calibrate it 
or move it to a different location, but it's not too bad. I also noticed that the heatbed cable's wires was short. When I click on Auto Home and the heatbed moves all the way back, these heatbed cables get very tense and they're bent a lot here on the end. Now I know that inside are the silicon wires and they are very flexible, but still I wish the cables are longer on the heated bed. On other hand, the cables on the X carriage are too flimsy, they bend this Bowden tube too much and the cables are touching the heat bed, which can lead to the fail prints and create issues with the filament retraction. So I decided to fix that. First I cut these cable ties and then I take off this plastic cable housing. Then I put the new cable ties. Then I take one wood stick from my wife's flower and I cut around 14 cm with the cutters. Then I cut rest of the cable ties and I place this wood stick inside the cable housing. Then I put the new cable ties and it was done. Now the cables will stay in a place and they will not touch the heat bed ever again. And now let's talk about the print quality. Even that both printer CR10S Pro and the CR10 Max share the same motherboard and the stepper drivers as well components on X and Z axis, they are not shared the same Y axis and that huge and heavy 450mm heated bed. So I expect that the print quality will be slightly worse compared to the CR10S Pro. As usual, my first test prints are 3D Benji at 0 0.2, 0 0.15 and 0.1mm layer height. But since this printer is so large, I print two more 3D Benji in 150% and 200% scale. And one FDM benchmark test. For printing profile, I load the CR10S Pro print profile in a simplified 3D and I use the same print settings. As you can see on all 3D Benjis, there are a lot of ghosting or ringing on a Y axis. And if you look on the right light angle, ringing is very visible which I did expect to show up at some extent, but honestly, I did not expect to show up this much. Since before my first test print, I already check everything and I already adjust all roller wheels, belts, I tie down all the screws and even those heatbed adjusting wheels, I screw them all the way down and I clamp the whole printer on the table. So from a mechanical standpoint, there was not much more to do which would fix this ringing issue. Messing with acceleration and the travel speed might help a bit, but not that much and printer will lose some of the print accuracy, so I didn't want to mess with those settings at this point. So I start the FDM benchmark test print and I sit down next to the printer to write the text script for this review. As I was sitting right next to the CR10 Max while it was printing, I started to feel vibration from the table when the heat bed was changing fast direction back and forward. Even though the printer was clamped down to my desk table, the whole table was still resonating. I could not hear vibrations, but I could definitely feel it and in that second the light bulb in my brain just turned on and I told to myself, no way, the table, this IKEA hollow table could be the reason why I have so much ringing in my test prints. Let's put it on the ground. And that's exactly what I did. I placed the printer on the ground and I print again my first 3D Benji and guess what? Ringing was almost completely gone and the print results was fantastic. Wow, look at this. The difference is huge. The Benji that I printed on the desk shows a lot of ringing, while the one that I printed on the ground shows almost no ringing. Amazing. I print again 3D Benji in 0 0.2, 0 0.15 and 0.1mm layer height, as well 150% and 200% scale 3D Benji. And the print results was fantastic. By the way, if you're wondering about the noise level when printing PLA, it's about 52 decibel, which is not too bad. The print quality on my old test prints was significantly improved after the replace CR10 Max on the ground, and I was blown away how much different it makes when I compare ground versus table. So now you know, if you're planning to get the CR10 Max, make sure that you place it on the ground or at least some non IKEA hollow table like mine if you're trying to get nice print results. I have also noticed that this filament switch was scrubbing the filament just like the CR10S Pro. What you can do is to print this cover on which you can attach the small piece of Bolden tube and this cover will not block any screws or LED lights. To install it, just press it on the filament sensor and that's it. Done. 
And now it's time to print something really big. But since this printer is so large, printing even this nice looking vase with a stock 0.4mm nozzle can take up to 36 hours. And more complicated prints in a full size can take days to print. Luckily in the package you will get two spare 0.4mm nozzle and one life-saving 0.8mm nozzle, which will reduce our printing time significantly. Now changing the nozzle is a quite simple and here is a quick guide. First take off the air duct nozzle and heat block silicon sock. Then warm up the hot end to 260 degrees, take the wrench size 20 and hold the heated block. Then with the wrench size 8 take off the nozzle. Then install the new 0.8mm nozzle. But be careful as the heat block is hot. Tie up the new nozzle cool down the hot end and then install suck and the air duct nozzle. Done. One tip, don't forget to set up the new Z offset as the 0.8mm nozzle is not only bigger in a diameter, it's slightly longer as well. With the new bigger nozzle installed, go to your slicer and instead of 0.4mm set the new nozzle size which is now 0.8mm. Now when you print big objects you can use bigger layer height like the 0.5 or 0.6 mm. The rest of the print settings are pretty much the same, except the temperature on the hot end, which needs to be higher, and the print speed, which needs to be lower, to let the filament to bond and cool down properly. Now when we slice the same vase again, print time is less than 20 hours, and before was 36. That's around 16 hours of time saving, which is great. Also, the wall of this waze printed with 0.8mm nozzle will be twice as thick and the waze will be much stronger compared to the stock nozzle. Since I will print this waze in a PLA, I let the energy saving mode turn on and the heat bed will turn off automatically after 10 or so layers, which will save a lot of electricity. When you print in a such a big scale, it's better to print slower and let the layers to bond and cool down properly, like I already mentioned. Printing is now done and the vase is looking awesome. The layers has bond very nicely on 0.6mm layer height and the print quality is excellent. Very nice print, I like it a lot. The link of this vase you can find in the video description. Now for my next print in a full size, I choose this baby grot. This is a very nice design 3D model with a lot of details and I'm wondering how it will look since I will lose such a big layer height. This model I will print in a silver PLA and it will take two spools of filament. Since to print this model it will take a lot of time, I was checking the printer every few hours to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Everything was going well and I had no problems during the printing. When the first spool was finished, the printer was on pause, I replaced the spool and I just click on continue. The printer then continue where it was and that's it. Easy. Since the CR10 Max has all thermal protection enabled, I was confident and I could leave this printer in my home to print 24-7 without worrying. Update tip, when you remove prints of this size, it's important that you remove it slowly with a spatula from all direction. And just wait for the pop-up sound. Done. And here is a baby grot printed in a full size on CR10 Max with a 0.8mm nozzle with no supports. And look at it, what a fantastic print. All details came up really nice. Too bad that I did not have two spools of the same brown or green PLA, but even this silver PLA looks very nice. And I like how the old details on the muscles turns out, it looks really cool and this is a great design 3D model. For those who wonder about print quality in PTG, TPU and ABS filaments, I have some good news. When I was printing my ABS test print, which is this octopus in 300% scale, I checked the heat bed temperature and now I'm getting 108 degrees, which is great and weird in the same time since I did not change or move thermistor sensor at all and now thermistor is reading right heat bed temperature. The only explanation that I have come up with is that probably heat resisting tape which holds the thermistor underneath the heated bed might get loose a bit, which is a good thing in my case. Anyway, heat bed temperatures are great now and I'm not touching anything. Alright, ABS test print is done. 
I have used the brim options in a slicer, which did a good job, and I had no warping. I removed the print and placed it on the table, and I was able to remove it nice and easy from the build tech without any damage. The print looks great and straight, and feels very strong. First layer is like always excellent on the CR10 Max, and overall this is very impressive ABS test prints. Next I print the same octopus in a carbon fiber PTG from a printer pro, which turns out very nice as well. Now you might think that PTG with added carbon fiber are more stronger and stiffer than the base PTG filament, but you will be wrong. I almost snapped one of the legs when I was removing this print, and in fact every filament with the added particles of wood or carbon fiber makes the base material less stronger and more brittle. And that's why I recommend these kind of filaments only for decorative prints, as it looks cool and it's a lightweight. And the last print is TPU test print with a hard flex filament again from a printer pro. And I have to say that I like this filament a lot. It's easy to print with and the printed parts looks great. They are still flexible, but also they can be very strong depending how much infill you use. Also this filament is also resistant to oil, grease, and UV light, which is very impressive. And now, the final words. After spending the few weeks with the CR10 Max, I can say that this is a very nice large-scale 3D printer with a great potential and I like it a lot. The only thing that I did not like is the fact that this machine cost 1000 US dollars, which by the way is a good deal for the printer of this size, but still it needed a few fixes. Things that Creality could easily solve during production line. But what I know about Creality is that they listen to the community and they are very receptive to the feedback. So by the time you get your CR10 Max, these few fixes that I did in this video could already be solved. Other than that, this printer is definitely a keeper and I already have some cool ideas and huge objects that I plan to print on my CR10 Max. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful. The links of CR10 Max and the filament that I use you can find in the video description. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.